Time to jump. What? There we go. No, time to jump. Oh. It's <laughs> into place. Into place. Okay. We used to have one of those things that used to actually work that used to do the... Do like the record button and stuff like that. But yeah. it is Wednesday and it's stat time of the month. Yes. <laughs> stat God, time. Stat time. <laughs> and it's an interesting take. Uh, um, what's going on? And I think I made a promise like February. We, we know a little bit more about the real estate market. Yeah. Um, but... Um, there's nothing uh, like really that's blaring out. Uh, so and I think I'm kind of a little surprised here because I, I think that uh, there's some relatively decent news with with uh, with the housing market now. I see it's like I thought it would be worse, but uh, I got to stop using my 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 notes as a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so some of the data that's come in over the month has been interesting. The couple of points to note is the 10 year treasuries have bounced back and forth. So um, I think uh, the FOMC met uh, about, and this is important to housing because it's dealing with um, the Fed fund rate, which obviously we keep saying this again, it's not necessarily directly correlated with, uh, with mortgage rates, but it is correlated with 10 year treasuries. So where are we going with this market right now? And I think the 10 year treasury is a good indicator of like what the future is holding for the real estate market as a whole. So, I mean, it's up uh, to, it was like, it got on the 3%, it's over four again. So rates probably just a shy bit, a little bit shy of seven right now. Mm -hmm. um, from what I could see, you know, in the interim, which is, I mean, obviously it's better than it has been since, um, since last, uh, since maybe, uh, last year around, uh, we really hit the highs in December, uh, mm. just past January was rough. Um, it was up to 8%, uh, but I think, well, I mean, early in the, early in January, late December, things kind of really shot up as far as the rates were concerned. But it seems like we've kind of reached a, um, what I call like a bell curve uh, in, in the market. So it's like, it looks like a bell. And I think that's where rates are kind of gone. We'll see how things are, they popped up a little bit mm -hmm. on the news that they are probably not gonna, they're gonna hold steady on rates. There's some early indications that says, um, that they were gonna they were gonna lower rates in the March meeting. There was some the markets kind of predicted that in. We don't know for a fact yet, but the jobs data came out. Jobs data. Yeah, and that's where the Fed had paused there. Fed had paused their real like interest in moving rates because. According to them, the job report was better than expected. They're looking for people to lose jobs. It's, you know, some of the things in the report, because they're always down, downwardly revised, and they included people who aren't current residents in the report. So I, that's a whole other ball game. I, I don't want to get into that, but... Uh, from what the indications and in, what this what, what 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 the reports kind of indicated is is they're not based on the job market they claim, which I, I don't mm. think it's out there uh, that it was better than expected. So I guess there wasn't enough layoff news. Oh. All you had to do is get your layoff news from TikTok. <laughs> yeah, because that's. <laughs> That's where people are like flipping out like on the job report. It's like, I can't find a job for six months, seven months, eight months, nine months, a year and a half. And it's like, uh, it's like f phony jobs, postings and things like that. So the economy is not doing that, at least from what the beat on the street is. It's not nowhere where it was. Big, big retail layoffs, um, Macy's. Um, Macy's closing a few stores. I think that's an uh, mm -hmm. UPS. UPS is laying off twelve after a record breaking. UPS. Contract. 
Uh, wow. Yeah, UPS, the brown trucks. Yeah. 12,000. I, I see them down the block. I know. That's 12, when you 000. order all those like Amazon things and she in, right? Yeah, they're, like, <laughs> they're always at my house. We know, we know Carrie's order in Hashim. Yes. <laughs> They're great. UPS. <laughs> the UPS delivery guy is there again. UPS. Um, so anyway, um, but like I said, some of the things that really get interesting now, I'm going to have to put my glasses on at some point because these things are tiny, mm. but, and I hate putting on glasses. It's not my thing, but I need new ones. So, <laughs> so Carrie. Yes. Yes. Let's go. What, we're going to get right down to the crux of this. What's yes. going on? What do we got here? Um, well, I'm going to start with month's inventory. Mm -hmm. um, so the month's inventory is down year over year. Right. Um, it's down 17%. 17%? Year over year. A whole year. 17%. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was crazy. Yeah. So what do you think about... So is there a, anything like specific that uh, we need to go over with that? I think. Yeah, I want to know, mm -hmm. like, what do you think are the implications of the reduced months of inventory? I think the what you're really looking at here is the adjustments to the market as far as like inventory and sales are down considerably. So it's kind of it's kind of like a good news bad news situation mm -hmm. for a lot of people because the volume we, we call it a low volume a low volume market. Um, so yeah. what's happening is is there not much there's not much in the way of uh, homes on the market and there's not much volume. And I love because we get into this debate quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. when we're dealing with uh, you know people selling. Well, there's not a lot on the market. Well, there's not a lot of sales either. So the market's like, so when we talk about the month's inventory down a whole 17%, that's a, is that year over year? Yeah, year yeah, over year. Yeah, year over year. It's so that's, it's, it's shown that it has a moving a little bit faster, but yeah. it's not showing, and the other numbers are going to bear this out, is that it's not necessarily the health of the market. That's, it's just the fact that there's not, of the things that are selling, they're selling, if it's priced correctly, they're selling quite quickly. So mm -hmm. it really comes down to what's going on. And there goes, I don't know if they could hear that, the sirens in the mic. I don't know. It's fire season. No, next month. March. Fire season. Yeah, down at the water here. If you know, like, Great Kills, Great Kills Park is like a, a big, the Phragmites, if you know what those things are, with the, all the like, little things that float through the air. Oh, yeah. Those things are highly flammable. They're like combustible. Mm. Literally, like they're... No, I didn't know that. It's like considered to be like, it's almost like one of the most combustible. It takes nothing to set those things up. Like literally, really? the heat from the sun, if it's hot enough and dry enough, like the smallest thing could set a fire. Because sometimes you'd be like, how does a fire start out of the blue? Yeah. It's so... Oh, interesting. Anyway, that, that's, that's from the... So, yeah, Phragmites. So when it gets... all, Staten Islanders have been here for a while know what those things are. So, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're those plants. But sometimes you hear this. That's when it gets busy at this firehouse here in Great Kills. Oh, yeah? Because they cover Great Kills Park. But anyway. Yes. Um, the So getting back to the month's inventory number down 17%. So basically what it would take. I would not jump up and down yet uh, to say that it's a positive number for sellers until we really see how things bear out in the next in the next report because sometimes the numbers skew month because January is typically a very slow month mm -hmm. and as the as we report the year over year sometimes it's not a true reflection of like a, a full 17% uh, drop but there's definitely fewer things on the market than there were a year ago. Yeah. And that continues to be the theme of real estate. Anybody who knows it, knows who's been out there, um, is going to see that. Uh, and uh, and that's the funny thing is like when there's news reports about the housing market, it's been like, I mean, you've been doing stats for two years. Oh, yeah, since I've been here. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, and it's, so... And we've just used, when we talked about inventory, it's been down. So it's down over down over down. Mm -hmm. 
And then when the first time you hear it's up, it's not a, it's not like a full recovery in terms of uh, the amount of houses that are on the market. So, uh -huh. but the one thing that's been consistent is prices, obviously. But we'll get to those numbers in a minute. Yes. So we got next. What's up? Um, the sale to list price ratio mm -hmm. is um, it remained relatively stable, right? With a slight increase year over year. Mm -hmm. So that's 0.73 percent increase year over year. Yeah. Um, it's down though, month over month, 0.72. Right. Um, I, I'm just wondering, like, how does the sell sell to list price ratio reflect the negotiation dynamics between buyers and sellers? I think um, right now the negotiation is it's very contentious to say the least. Still, because. You're not going to get a ton of offers on a house that, like, we're in the multiple bid situation. Okay. So one of the things that, you know, what this number is indicating to me mm -hmm. is that the sales to list price ratio is basically static. It's not, it's not anything that I, I would say is, has changed year over year or month over month. We've been in this, like, in kind of a hold pattern at this, um, was it 97%? So we got it. We're giving a. Two. Um, which one? Um, the year over year is up. Uh, point seventy three. Yeah, but what's the total? So oh, the, oh, ninety six point five. Yeah, ninety six point five in New Jersey. In some places, still over a hundred. Mm -hmm. But this here, so it's come down a bit, and I think you know it's nearly one percent. There's another stat in here that I really would want to pay attention to a little bit more, and we'll get to that, I'm sure, at some point. Yeah. Um, but it's negligible. It's 1% difference. I mean, that's that's pretty notable, so, and that's expected. I think that's where we're going to see, where we may see some of the price declines, because mm -hmm. it seems like sellers are willing to negotiate more based on this last report. So it's almost... Three quarters of a percent negotiation room in a span of a month is notable. Let's see how long that lasts. If we develop a three month trend, then we got a trend line to develop. Right now, it's kind of jagged. It's not really something that yet that I'm going to pay attention to mm -hmm. in the short term. I think in the long term, though, we're going to see the sales to list price ratio. If we develop a three month trend, you know, we may be talking about something else, but there is something in this report that I'm going to make notable because I think there is something in here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you're going to get to it. Did we talk about um, the pending sale list price? Pending sale list price? Yeah. Do we actually get into that here? Uh, no, that's actually yeah. not on. So let me get into that yes. and what, where I have the concern here. Um, I'm going to stick these on for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the percentage of the pending average listing is something that I always like to say, and the the sold median listing, two numbers that have month over month decreases. One is a whole four percent. So the pending average listing price of the houses that go into contract are down four percent. Okay. So yeah, uh, a month over month, mm -hmm. and that's where, this is where we kind of seen that little softness that. I, I have a little bit of concern with this whole median listing mm -hmm. is also down um, 2%, almost 3% month over month. Yeah. But the pending is, so what it is, is people are looking at a price segment right now that's basically lower than it's been. So the pending average listing, meaning of the houses that have contracts, what is the list price that they have contracts on? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of where I see the indicator like maybe weakening a bit because people are going into contract on houses 4%, a month over month, 4% lower. Mm -hmm. Is it an anomaly that remains to be seen? Is it a one month thing? It remains to be seen. The year over, diff year, over year difference is not even, what, two tenths of 1%. So it's yeah. not even, it's negligible there. So I don't see it as being, a, I don't see it particularly being an issue yet, but it's something that I want to keep a watch on because I think that's where mm. this 
report on where uh, sales could go could be really a problem uh, if, it, if that continues. Because mm -hmm. that means just people, it's gonna, it's because of the, 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 the size of the sale or the median sale price of the list price, usually gonna be indicative that sale price later on is gonna be reflective as, reflective of this mm -hmm. trend. So the pending average listing month over month was down 4%. Yes. But that's nothing to jump. You just want to keep an eye out. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep an eye on it. It's right. like, you know, I was gonna, I thought there would be some things in here that the 8% rates would do. Mm -hmm. There are some things that it has done, and I think that's one of the things that I'm really interested in looking at. So people are looking at lower priced houses. So the ones that are pending, they're looking at lower, lower mm -hmm. list price uh, houses than, mm -hmm. than probably the prior months. That remains to be seen because that's on the pending side. That may show up in the, in the sales side when they close. We'll see how that plays out. Yes. So what's up next? Um, next we have the sold medium sale. Mm -hmm. the, um, that's also down month over month. That's down uh, 0.36% that's, month over month. Okay. So what's the full number? So right now it is at seven hundred thousand. Okay. So Dollars. yeah. So you yeah, <laughs> seven hundred thousand nickels. <laughs> We're gonna bring the bags in. Oh God! <laughs> but anyway, um, the there's so year over year the year over year difference is uh, the sold median sale price of Santa is up two percent down. Um, December 2023 was at 702, so mm -hmm. we were up a full 2.19%, 2. Um, 2 right? Mm -hmm. And down 36, 0.36, not even uh, one third of 1% mm -hmm. uh, on the month to month. Nothing to report there. There's, there's nothing, that's, that's a static number. Prices have remained steady here. So this is not really something that I'm really too concerned with. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, when I look at the, the, the problem is the volume and this is where we, we, I don't like sales at this rate, at this volume because it could be a problem later. Volume is supportive of prices. When you have low volume markets like this, it doesn't take much for us to tip usually in the other direction. Um, sometimes, especially when you add price appreciation at the rate it did. Now, if it like kind of peters down and like things kind of ma like volume starts like increasing again, it can be, it could be a demand side push. You can push those prices up, but contrary, if it, it could also mean more inventory and less buyers mm -hmm. and that could drive prices down. And it's a very, 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 when you have low volume, it could be quite volatile. So prices could swing rather quickly because it doesn't take, there's so few sales that it doesn't take much to skew the data one way, uh, skew the uh -huh. supply demand uh, one way uh, uh, significantly when you have that few, fewer sales mm -hmm. or houses in the market. So um, it's something that remains to be seen here. Uh, I. Just like I said, um, it is nothing on the, like right now that indicates prices are going too far anywhere. I mean, I thought I'd see some more softness mm -hmm. um, in this report, but it's not, it's not showing up in the sales date, in the actual sale price data. It is showing up on the, on the other data though, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on volume information that we have. Yes. So. Um, now. Active listings are down year over year, mm -hmm. uh, almost 16%, it's at 15.80%. Um, what factors are contributing to the decrease in yeah. active listings over the past year? I think, um, I think what's happening here is, you know, from the information we usually, you know, we, we deal with quite a few people about like they're in the process of thinking of selling or mm -hmm. they're thinking of, and one of the problems that I feel is probably the biggest draw or draw down from is like 
A, I can't find anything. B, I don't want to lose my rate that I'm currently at. That's probably, the yeah. B is probably more of anything, uh, more than anything else. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> this is like a catch-22. So for anybody who doesn't really know what's going on, I really would say it's, if you're going to move and pri you're going to, like, you lock into a rate, and you're at a good rate, you're at a good, you got to factor cost. I mean, obviously that's the number one factor. Um, but there are people who are in like superior equity positions. And the question becomes where the equity to sale price to how much you could fund uh, in cash will be key to knowing whether it's a good decision or not. And I'll tell you why that is. Because mm -hmm. if, if, let's just say a house, uh, someone who has an equity position of maybe $500,000 and wants to go to New Jersey and get, get either upgrade, stay, may, upgrade, and maybe at a better cost mm -hmm. basis. The thing is, is like, you know, you sell for five, you sell for 600 here. There's not much of a mortgage. Say you got a $100,000 mortgage left. And you have a good, you know, five hundred thousand dollars to put on the next house. The biggest thing is what percentage of it you're financing for, because if the rates do go down and trickle down, mm -hmm. what's going to happen is prices are going to accelerate. So when you deal with smaller numbers, it's more negligible in terms of like what you can manage as far as like how much the interest payments going to be like really like. Um, how much of it can't be affordable? Yeah. So it's like, is six and a half percent seven, uh, just under seven, six point eight now, six point nine? Is it like going to be the difference maker on maybe like a hundred thousand dollar loan, which maybe we be required for someone to kind of like uh, buy an upgrade in New Jersey? So if the equity positions are there. I think one of the biggest things is, is they may be at a low rate now, but they're only remaining with $100,000 remaining on the loan. Mm -hmm. If you wait for rates to drop, I think what's going to happen is, just like everybody else, you're going to run into price increases. And guys, I'm going to tell you this. I think there's a lot of, this is a different market than most people are used to. I, I, I don't, the thing, the parameters for what, like, uh, like the interest rates, they're not creating the sense of, and it really has to do with the financial position of the general market, of the general market, I mean, and people's ability to afford what they have. Mm -hmm. Unless there's an erosion of like people's ability to pay and there's foreclosures, because that was the caveat for the 2006, 7, 8 market, was foreclosures dominated. You don't see that now. And that's the only reason for someone to be put in a for sale position. You may have some of that, but to the degree that you're going to have it that's going to affect prices, especially when you're talking about volumes like this low, it doesn't, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I, and I kind of take more, I mean, usually I'm more bearish on this stuff than most people. Mm -hmm. Some people say I'm too bearish on things <laughs> when it comes to, to prices. But I think it's going to go down and it, it never really kind of does. This, what you're seeing in prices, you got to remember, this is just reflective of inflation. Yeah. So I, I think what it is, is that people are realizing that the appreciation, just like when you go to a, it looks like prices of housing is moving higher, but it's no higher than your groceries in terms of percentage. Okay. So what happens is it's just like your dollars are just worth less. So people are assuming... Well, I'm increasing value. No, your Brussels sprouts are more money than the same Brussels sprouts you bought six months ago. Brussels sprouts, <laughs> whatever it may be. Yeah. But like that's but the thing they they don't change. Like things don't necessarily change value. They I mean they don't change cost. They change value. Whatever you're using. To, so people are saying, oh well, I, you know, if I could sell for uh, thirty percent more, twenty five percent. That's only really reflective of the value of what the currency is being used. So people are like, is it going down? Because people are looking at it as a structural market, like yeah. in terms of like, oh, well, you know, the, the numbers are increasing. Yeah, they are. But they're numbers. 
it's just at the end of the day, it's it's the paper. The people, are, but it's not the value the value quotient. So people are thinking, well, well, my prices are going up. No, because everything else is too. So it's yeah, <laughs> you know. But the biggest constraint is is that when you have this kind of what we call asset inflation, because it's like these things are uh, housing is asset. Um, these things are more fundamentally attractive in the marketplace. So people who are uh, investors tend to hedge against the devaluation of money into housing because it's hard. I can't really. You can't. The utility doesn't change. And when utility doesn't change, but currency debases or devalues, what happens is you basically have a situation where the, the numbers will go up, uh, and that's all. It's not like the, the value of, the, of the, the assets does anything more. You know, it's, it functions as a house. But it's just the, the value of, of the currency right now is the problem of, for most people. I mean, what they're seeing is not so much appreciation. So if people know, yeah, I sold my house for, you know, maybe 20% more. Yeah, but everything, if everything else costs 20% more, you're no different standing. And I don't think, you know, so if price, the question is if prices come down, it's like deflationary. And I, I think that could be, uh, I, I don't, I mean, I, I just don't see that happening. Um, so no. I, I don't, I, this is going to be a freaking crazy year. It's gonna <laughs> it be nuts. already is, yeah. Yeah, isn't it another year? Yeah. Our iPad doesn't work. God. <laughs> Damn it. I'm so upset. Like, I know. There's been crazy stuff. There's been a ghost in here. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. We have some ghosts. It's like, what is an iPad, like, all of a sudden, like, just zonked out? I mean, I have that iPad. It's like. I know. It was working yesterday. I don't know. I know. What could have happened? But. Yeah. It's the ghost. Yeah. Like, Gonna have to get some paranormal, paranormal detectors. <laughs> see if see if there's ghosts roaming roaming the place. Oh my god! <laughs> you know of any? No. no I know I one, know. Casper. Oh, Casper the ghost. <laughs> that was the friendly ghost. Yeah, that Casper was a friendly ghost. ghost. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <Funny>. <laughs> Um, what else do I have going on here? Let's talk about the pending listings. Yes. Yes? Yes, because <laughs> this is the shocker. Yeah. I think this is the shocker of the report. Pending listings? They're both up year over year and month over month. Right. Yeah. So year over year, it's up 31. And this is the year. nuttiness of these <laughs> I know. Like, I don't it understand. It's it just, it's so, you know, pending sales are up, but the pending listing price is down. It, it's, it, it, I, it doesn't jive. It's not. Uh, yeah, is it not like, and that's a, that's a, that's, so there was a good clip of sales last month. And it's a 70, and that's not typical of a December <laughs> at all. So it's like, what the hell just happened there? Yeah. The, the Christmas shopping on the real estate market. Because oh I was really expecting that to be one of the things that I'd be looking for. Is, and this I is why this market's become so hard to predict. is because of like freakish numbers like this. I know. It's like, what is this doing? Like, like okay, the, the, pending, the pending listing average is down 4%. But the amount of... Pending listings is up seventeen percent. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, I'm doesn't sorry. make it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to look at that because <laughs> if I it it's hard to imagine. I mean, so that can mean one of two things. Yes. Like People who are in these moderately priced homes put their house up rather quickly. They sell rather fast, and I think that's the case. Most of the, I think at the higher end of the market. This, I mean, there's some like weird thing like this. This is such a nutty economy. Luxury houses are still. 
you know, it's like a market of, I guess, haves and have nots because it's like, the, I, went from, I read a report mm -hmm. yesterday that luxury home sales are up. Mm. And that's just so unusual. Luxury. Usually when the market softens at the higher end of the market, usually stuff is first and that's not happened. It's been going up. So traditionally speaking, that's unusual. So I would really venture to say this market has a lot of surprises in it. Um, and one of, because you think about it, you know, consumer sentiment, uh, like every number that you read is almost a contradiction to the next number you get. And most of these reports are doing this uh, on some, like we're fine. I'm finding that most of these reports and that's not to say that the data is wrong either, because I think these data, the data set here is pretty good. It's, you, you'll come across numbers like this, the 17% pending listings and the decrease in the average pending listing uh, price, meaning the actual sale, the, the listed price when it goes pending, going down 4%, while pending listings are up mm -hmm. 17 for the month. It's like they, you would not expect this cross section yeah. to happen, and this is this is the oddity of this market, and it's just um, it lacks a true fundamental mm -hmm. picture of like month to month. You don't know where that, sh and that's that's the uncertainty in the market. I think a lot of markets are uncertain right now, except for Wall Street. Somebody's making. I mean. Mm -hmm. And, but the, the, the interesting thing, I would watch some things on, on what's going on there, and that's the same problem. Like, they're saying the valuations on Wall Street aren't there for the prices to be accelerating as much as they do. But this is part of what I call all this soft money. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's, it's not the stock that's losing, that's gaining value. It's what's used to purchase a stock that's losing it. So it seems like prices are accelerating at a higher rate, and they are because there's money just still sloshing around. I, I don't know how that how that ends up, um, but I do think that I don't know what the Fed's going to do before, like they really start. There's going to be some red, a day of reckoning here with this whole situation because I, I think some of the numbers that I'm pointing at least in terms of like the overall economy, I, I don't know where these numbers are coming from. It, it's mm -hmm. It's not the sentiment that I, I get, and it's not the sentiment you get on the street. It's a, like there's something, something doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'm not quite understanding what's going on with it. But the interesting thing is that this sales report basically doesn't have much in the way um, in any major news either way, except for the rise in pending sales for, geez, for January. Yeah. That's a lot. It's a lot. 17% yeah, is a cool. big jump. Now, I want to know what you think of the new listings being up 88% month over month. Not a, yeah. Because that like kind of, I was like 88%, but like 88%, I don't know. Right. What uh, yeah, do seasonally, <laughs> because it's not like anytime you go from January is the most decreased, like when inventory gets, the lowest point of inventory is January every year. Okay. And this year in Staten Island was like down to 700. It doesn't take much mm -hmm. uh, for things to kind of flip over, turn over once the, once the new year turns in. Um, so I'm not, this is uh, what we call regular seasonal. Okay. I mean, 80, it says 88%, is that, the, is that what it is? Yeah, it's up month over month, 88%. Yeah. Because you just talk about like in house in the office, it's up like you know two hundred and seventy five percent from because January, I mean December is absolutely is there is no inventory in January. Nobody puts their house up in December, so everybody puts yeah. their house in January. Okay. So let's just say uh, if you had no or you have one listing in uh, in December and you had three, basically it's two two hundred percent. Uh, increase in the mm. amount of in the amount of available uh, listings. You see something there? Me? No, uh, I thought I was just reading. Uh, Zaki? I think that's Zaki. Yeah. No. That's my. 
Yeah. Anyway, if anybody has a question, I can't even see. Uh, <laughs> I you should be able to see better than me. I should get my eyes checked again because I have you my can't contacts see? in. I see, I see letters. I see letters. Can you see the more? Can you see the name Mike? Yeah, I see. I see the name Mike. Okay. She got to squint in there. I know. I'm the one supposed to have the eye. I have the reading problem. I, I, that's from me spending years in front of a computer screen. It was yeah. So this is this this question is is how we get to this next question. The lumber futures. Yes. Um. So <laughs> I want to know. Um. What does the lumber futures indicate? Um, I read somewhere recently about how that could predict the future market. Mm -hmm. and I want to know your input on the lumber futures. Okay. This is an interesting wrinkle in this. So yes. lumber futures. <laughs> now, that's one of the things that... So generally, like, sometimes you have to go outside the box, kind of see, like, where all the parts of the market are moving. One of the things that you want to look at is, like, that falls in line with home builder sentiment, mm -hmm. uh, lumber futures, um, and we did. I did some analysis on the curve here. Uh, so, lumber futures last month. I mean, they dipped again because everything is kind of interest rate dependent. So, if people feel the housing market's going to make a, a full sh full on shift, what's going to happen is lumber futures generally will rise because it'll be like, okay, we're building some more. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, the peaks and the and the troughs in the in the in, in the lumber futures right now are suggesting that we're pretty stable. So for almost two years, we've been in a two-year decline on lumber futures. So from the height, which was like ridiculously like seven hundred, uh, it's like seven hundred dollars a plank. Mm. I think it's it's done in planks. I, I'm pretty sure. I gotta check that again, but I think mm -hmm. it's plank. Seven hundred dollars a plank to down to five hundred dollars a plank. Wow. Or uh, I'm gonna check that. It may be because it sold like a plank. I think is a certain bundle of uh, of lumber. I, I'll check on that for you. But we usually look at this as an indicator of where the market may believe housing is going. So the last part, um, the rise or the, the the Fed's indication that this that they may not raise, I mean, lower interest rates as projected in March, has led to a decrease in lumber futures, which may be indicative that there could be some softness ahead. That's one of the things, kind of like you try to find some outliers here because, Lord knows, the stats don't bear much. It's like you you try. We're gonna be down to reading tea leaves soon. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get like a yeah, reading the tea leaves. Um, we're gonna have to get like a saucer or something. A it's like, give me some stats, like spit something that makes sense. Because I don't know, it feels like we're in, in. I don't know. These times feel like it's just interesting just to see like these numbers how they play out. It's just. You know, I don't think people just uh, with the general state of the economy are just in uh, in the most happiest of moods, and that's mm. just the way it goes. I mean, it's an interesting time, and I think uh, we'll see how this plays out in the next the next couple of quarters. But I think we're going to be in for a very interesting upcoming year going into the summer, and then Lord knows, heaven help us going into. <laughs> it's the next, it's the next holiday season. Okay. I don't want to push it that far because it's 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 we're not there yet. But uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, and I think one of the things we're going to be paying attention to is how these how these uh, the Fed kind of moves policy. Um, everything else is not looking great. So uh, bankruptcies were up. I read um, bankruptcies. personal bankruptcies are up nineteen percent year over year. Business bankruptcies are up sixty something percent. There's a there's, so there's some weakness out there, and I, it's like seems to be getting missed out. The, the numbers are being missed, but mm -hmm. we have to see. Um, who knows? We may get throttled on here a little bit because nobody wants to talk about those things. <laughs> no. You know what throttling is, right? Throttling. Yeah, they like they screw with your bandwidth, and they don't like what you're talking about. Okay. 
the like they fight. It's like cut. Kind of, yeah, they throttle. It's being called throttle. Throttle. Come on. I gotta get. It. That's like it's it's like a form of gaslighting. Oh yeah. Okay. I know gaslight. I don't know throttle. <laughs> oh, you know gaslight. <laughs> yes. I bought one recently. <laughs> what in gaslight? Yeah. I leave it on my table. That's why I know. You know. Yeah, Instead of me good. saying you gaslighting me, I just turn it on <laughs> and take a picture. I like it. You like, like click. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I made the electrician's guide to gaslighting. Did you see that? You made the. Electric. Oh, you made like a post, right, or yeah, something? Yeah, that's funny. I did. <laughs> but we're not going to gaslight you on stats. No, we would not. We won't do that to you, even though <laughs> some of these other stats look like it. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of the things don't make sense. Yeah. But, you know. Um, but anyway, I think the market in general is at, um, it's trying to figure itself out. And I think for the most part, if you kind of wait this out, I think um, those folks, there's not going to be any winners and losers, fortunately. And I think some people rather with the tie. Uh, and I think in this particular case, I don't see prices coming down. I don't. At this point, I would have expected it. If something has to major has to happen, like in a downward cycle in the next like three months for that to happen, or if they hold the rates where they are for a longer period of time, then it could be something more on the downside. I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't. I, every time I expect it, it's like the the more you expect it, the less it happens. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how this plays out in the next few months. But uh, usually the numbers get better from here. So okay. that's going to be interesting. It's the spring season, more volume. Any more volume added to this market, price is going to go up. There's not enough on the market right now. Uh, to, but if a whole bunch of houses come on the market, if you're selling, stop trying to time this thing out because you will get you'll get burned one way or another. If you think about the fundamentals, think about like what you're primarily looking to do as far as your move. See what kind of equity position I'll make a decision on that. There's too many uncertainties one way or another to say, you know, sell high uh, and buy low. It's, it's, chances are that's not going to happen. So um, just know about what your equity position is, figure it out financially, and that's something that could obviously be looked at, you know, yeah. when we talk one-on-one. One-on-one. <laughs> anyway, yes. that's what we have for today. Um, Next week, we'll be doing New Jersey. That's going to be another interesting. New Jersey's oh, yeah. numbers came in lower last month. Does mm. that trend continue? Does it? I we'll find out. Curious. Yeah. So am I. It's like, is it going to happen or isn't it? Ooh. The ghost. <laughs> the ghost is so crazy. <laughs> no. Um, the, so, enough ghost tales. I mean, yeah. um, but we'll see if... Uh, if if we could like, you know, <laughs> don't mind. Okay. <laughs> you have a great day, folks. Yes. If you have a question, you have a solution, you have something we could be doing better. Let us know in the comment section or instant DM us. yeah DM us. That's the, that's the word DM. DM. That's like that's the that's the Instagram thing now. Yeah. Did he DM or did he text? Which one is it? Mm, always better to text. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's more serious. Okay, there you go. <laughs> there you have it. Yes. Well, DM us. DM us. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. Have a great day. We'll yeah. see you next week.